Finally, just as I told you, the weekend was going to be very busy here in Shybag Studio and it really was because it's Sunday evening, it's already night and I'm still working. One of the reasons it was very busy is this mess right here. This is our Cannondale FSI Carbon 2 and I'm happy to present to you in-depth review of this bike. Uh, what I did to the Super 6, uh, some people just um, wrote to me that they've never seen such a detailed information. Well, I'm not an expert just yet, like a super expert, but I think I can really provide you some really cool, cool info. So today you're gonna see each and every part all you're gonna weigh on the scale here. And if you have further questions, just uh, put those in the comment section. Uh, why don't we just buy different stuff and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you and destroy for you if you want just anything how you can support this uh, new project you've got some info just in the description of this video and we're gonna talk about it at the end of this episode all right so stay with me so here it is uh, the lefty and the frame we're gonna just leave uh, to the end of this episode and we're gonna just start by looking at different components this bike came with and weigh them. So first off we have the cassette and this is the uh, M8000 so XT uh, 1142 and the weight the scale shows 427 by the way you can just grab your smartphones and uh, just open your calcula cal calculator and we'll see the weight of the bike it was 10, uh, 10 kilo on my large scale we'll see in details 427 for the cassette the cassette 1 by 11 I have many many info to share with you about one by drivetrain we're gonna do that in the future all right here we have this is the steering tube this is the steerer for the lefty uh, and the weight is 117 with a cup nicely done the cup has some uh, some rubber seal here which is really cool guys I know that audio so far in my studio is not the best and uh, the lighting really sucks but that's what I have so far uh, and I'm gonna be improving in that uh, this is the Canada C1 this is not 77 it's 76 centimeters I, I said 77 on other episode uh, but uh, it is exactly a 76 not bad 191 this is Cannondale C1 carbon handlebar uh, let's go to the super cool seat post this is Cannondale safe uh, it works really well and it feels comfy but we'll see in in the um, XC, uh, XC races and marathons 193 this is 27.2 diameter and uh, 40 centimeters from the end to the saddles rails all right let's go further we have XDR rear derailleur and it's 222 okay so everything was assembled very well in the bike I didn't have any complaints I'm going to show you more details in the wheels also and frame this is the 100 millimeters uh, stem 183. This is of course Canada style, so 1.5 uh, bearings in the headset. And then we have the grips, Canada grips. Uh, those give you nice grip, nice, uh, I would say, <laughs> your, your hand will have nice traction here, uh, but um, I, I prefer something more soft like more spongy uh, this is quite hard uh, all right so that was it then we have brakes no one actually knows what kind of brakes these are these are magura uh, mt race and looks like um, this model sits somewhere in between mt4 and mt6 that we actually know with those two bolts we have 210 I'm not sure whether it doesn't sit on on the book on the catalog we have candle catalogs just under this okay 258 that's cool we have 259 okay 260 uh, already with the meter oil and 
I'm not sure whether it's mineral oil. Um, and anyway, it's already sealed, ready to go. And then since we have the front one, let's go for the rear one. The rear one with the bolts and the adapter. That's the bolts and the adapter and then the brake is going to show 251 knives. Uh, Sorry, this is the front one, obviously. 251 for the front brake and this is the adapter we are using uh, for lefty. Okay, so we've got the brakes. Since we're talking about the brakes, let's see the rotors with the bolts. This is the uh, Magura Storm HC, uh, the rear one, 160 millimeters. With those six bolts, we have 132 grams. Okay, how much do you have so far? And then the rear one uh, is, sorry, the front one is 180. By the way, what do you think about having 180 in the front? Uh, do you think it's must? Uh, in my opinion, 160 would be just okay. Uh, this is Storm HC as well. So 180 with the bolts and we have 153 grams. Cool. All right. Derailleur, they're not derailleur, the shifter. The shifter, I thought it was XTR. This is actually XT M8000. 135 with the cable, cable was not cut. So 135 for the shifter. And then something really exciting. That's the Cannondale uh, Hologram SI crankset. 32 teeth. Uh, we have in the front 510 grams 11. I love it. I really love this this crankset. I'm not gonna do the uh, another episode just as I told you. Uh, what I wanted to share with you is that Cannondale allows you uh, to uh, remove this lock here, like lock nut, and then you can uh, turn around your um, your spider. I mean your um, chain ring. Uh, so that it, when it wears down, when your pedal stroke is super strong, you can simply just spin it around a little bit and then uh, just prolong the lifetime of your chain ring. And this is really a cool feature. Mm, I like it very much. Super stiff piece of a crankset. 500 and what? 11 grams. It is uh, awesome. Absolutely awesome. Then we have uh, the seal for the headset, the uh, top one, and three uh, spacers under the stem, that's 22 grams. 22 grams. Okay, 22 grams. Um, then we have the chain, all right, the cable guide for the frame. That's the one just below the top tube, the, the head uh, tube, that's four grams. That's four grams, guys. And then the chain, the chain, that's the uh, HGX11 and it's uh, the model, it's HG601. 252, so 252. It doesn't have the quick link, so you use just the pins. Uh, of Shimano. I'm gonna do episode about that because uh, some people don't break their chains in the way they should. All right, uh, okay, we have the brakes, we have this and we have that. Now, the quick release for the rear, because we don't have quick release in the front, we have through axle uh, in the lefty way. So 67 grams for the quick release for the rear wheel. Then, okay. I didn't want to deform my uh, my racing Ralphs, so racing Ralph 225, uh, and the weight will be. I'm just gonna roughly show you that on the scale. It's 655. 655. Uh, let's see whether the other one will also show 655. 
this is 29er this is this is more and the other shows 608 and that's always interesting to weigh different uh, tires same model but different tires uh, because sometimes it does really show different 613 that would be just too much of a difference i'm gonna do it once more so start for six what six ten right and here we have six still 651 if that's true uh, i would say that uh, schwalbe did not make those tires with uh, lots of accuracy okay let's just maybe fix the lighting a little bit all right i'm all excited now to show you okay we have this is the tape for the for the wheel a one and two so that's if you're using the inner tube 65 grams 65 grams i'm using one just under my smartphone so that I, so that i can see and um, what you what you see and then we have the inner tubes the canada did not save money on this one this is the schwalbe extra light uh, one weighs 142 we'll see the other one 144 five okay so here we have some accuracy and then the wheels the wheels the wheels because uh, we have super special wheels both for the front and the rear the front one uh, that's the one compatible with the left T and it weighs 684 really nice weight 684 we have a lefty specific uh, hub here as you can see it has two different uh, bearings uh, and the the larger one is from the lefty side the smaller one is is uh, from the uh, drive side so from the right side uh, what i like about these wheels uh, so much is that the tension on the spokes is is uh, really nicely done so it's very very even between different spokes that means there was no rush lacing the wheel which is so so uh, so popular i would say uh, with different manufacturers also those holes in the uh, in the rim are not in line uh, holes for the uh, drive side uh, spokes uh, go bit to the non-drive side and then those to the uh, non-drive side spokes go to the drive side just like a one and a half millimeters or, or so and then we have rear wheel and that was the question is the rear wheel of the as um, asymmetrical rear triangle of the frame is the wheel symmetrical and i told you probably not because um, i could simply hear and feel that the uh, the tension on the drive side spokes is uh, higher than the non-drive side but i did not take into account one super important factor the flanges of the hub which is this part here is uh, much larger than the flange on the uh, non-drive side that means uh, the spokes on the drive side are shorter than the non-drive side but it does not mean that the wheel isn't uh, is not uh, symmetrical so if i try to show you you probably are not going to see it very very well but the wheel actually does look just perfectly balanced that means symmetrical what what it means the frame allows uh, for the wheel to have six millimeters more for the cassette so we have more space for the cassette here uh, thus the flange from from the drive side goes uh, to the outside by six millimeters and so we have super stiff wheel this is the best way to build a rear wheel and rear uh, rear triangle of the frame period that's super awesome what canada has made so you will see here uh, AI um, so asymmetric integration some people say it's disadvantage because you need to have AI wheel on the Canada I don't want to have anything else but AI wheel so only AI system on the rear wheel that's the best thing uh, and let's just weigh this one let's see this is the C0 as in the front uh, in terms of the rim so it's carbon one. Oh, my scale just turned off 
Uh, so we have carbon, carbon uh, rim and alloy uh, hubs, fully alloy. And this one, this one, the rear wheel has 900 and yeah, just about 918 grams. Yeah, I'm not touching it right now. Nine, these are my hands, here are my hands. So 909. 909, and then one question. Some people say, 4,000 bucks bike and no uh, through axle in the rear. You don't need through axle because, because you have so stiff rear triangle, asymmetrical rear triangle. So that was the point of not having through axle. Uh, and now we have a heavy duty lefty. Just as I told you, uh, this is the fork, the only fork and hedgehog, the DLR80 that I would use for my bikes, the only ones, I would never use anything else. But as I told you, there are some disadvantages uh, of this fork and I'm gonna tell you much more about it uh, when we ride this one. But first I can tell you right now is the weight. I used to say you're gonna go for some like um, three days um, race somewhere in the mountains, go for lefty because that's the, that's the lightest one. Well, I would say no longer because uh, Cannondale kind of changed the, uh, the direction here, uh, going more into strength and stiffness, which is surprising for me because Lefty was never lacking strength and stiffness. But here we have 1756 grams. 1760 and 56 grams. I hope that you can see, guys. Sorry for my lighting. I just don't know how to do it. All right, what's changed with the lefty? It's, uh, it's become even more robust. So the diameter of the upper part of the lefty now has 40, like 44 millimeters. I just lost somewhere my, uh, my caliper, sorry for that. So, the whole lefty now is tapered. We have 44 millimeters here in the top, like between those uh, crowns, and much less here, like around 40 millimeters, I would say. So lefty has become, lefty 2.0 has become more, um, more uh, robust, and it is tapered right now. This is the alloy one, and it weighs 1761 grams. It's not bad. It's with the through axle because it's integrated. It's with the adapter for the uh, front brake and it's with the lockout. So we have a lockout here uh, and that's how much uh, it weighs. So we don't have the steerer here, you know the weight of the steerer as, uh, already, but we have the, the through axle, which is actually the part of the hub as well. So the hub will be lighter. So that's it, 1761 grams. I absolutely love it in terms of the stiffness. We'll be really putting it into, into some tests. We have two springs, so this is the new upgrade, two spring upgrade, it has it. Uh, it looks awesome uh, and uh, we'll be talking much more about it uh, in the future. Now, how it's, uh, how it's been made. It has now the hybrid needle bearing system. So we have needle bearings up here and we have the bushing here in the lefty. One bushing, uh, it's no problem for the, uh, for the like um, cornering and, and for the stiffness. So this is the needle bearing, it's up here. And this is the ideal situation uh, for the needle bearing. We have uppers, we have lowers, in between needle bearing, uh, squared in squared system, awesome. And here down there is the bushing, uh, which works very well with the needle bearings so far as I tried it just here in the studio. And it seals up also the whole system. So there is much more to come in terms of lefty testing on this channel. All right, we've got it all, I think. Now it's time for uh, the frame. The frame. As I already told you, the paint of this frame is just awesome. I love it. I love it so much. There are some, some bolts here that make this noise. Uh, so we have the non-hybrid frame in large, um, uh, size for me, I'm six feet tall, let's just wait first off. 
Now the weight will be with both bearings in the headset 1.5 so no tapered candle style 1.5 uh, bearings here uh, and also with the PF30 bearings uh, in the bottom bracket area. Let's turn the scale on and see what happens. Okay, let's do it like this. Okay, this is this is cool. This is 1300 grams, 1308. So it's with all the bolts, it's with the seat post clamp. 1300 grams, large size, non-high mode. So this is the, the heavier one and it's with the four, I would say, quite huge bearings. So uh, the frame itself should weigh just around, I don't know, 1100 grams, something like that for the inter intermediate um, uh, mode, intermediate mode, modulus <laughs> carbon fiber. All right. What I like about it is it looks robust but all the frames now looks really robust, have huge box here in the headset area. This is the double crown proof frame, so we have to take that into account. Uh, when Cannondales uh, is selling the, the forks, you can buy Lefty for your bike, they say you have to be sure, make sure your frame is double crown fork proof. It has to be stronger and this one really is. Here we have the bottom bracket area, very robust, huge with the Delta seat tube, just, just as Cannondale um, make it very, very wide here uh, around the, the bottom brackets. I have some hair here around, sorry for that. And we have this AI system, so we have asymmetrical integration uh, on this bike. That means this part of the frame was moved by six millimeters outwards we have more space for the wheel, we have symmetrical wheel in the rear and we don't need through axle because this is super strong. We have also a short chain stays, 43 millimeters and lots of place for the mud, for the dirt, for the tires. I have 225 those racing rafts, still a lot of space. Also, this frame is front derailleur ready. Canada, thank you very much because some uh, manufacturers just just don't allow us to use uh, front derailleurs anymore. This one, as a matter of fact, comes with some parts. Uh, we have the down swing, swing and side swing adapter for this frame and some, some spare parts as well. So this is really cool. How it performs, you're gonna see a lot because I'm training a lot and I'm gonna be doing a lot of crazy stuff in the cross country and MTB marathons in Poland and in Europe as well. I'm not going to show you the, the inspection of the inside for the wrinkles. It looks almost perfect, I would say perfect. Um, I will do detailed um, photos and put those on my Instagram. So my Instagram, uh, you've got the link on my main page, uh, page uh, of this uh, channel and you will see the frame from the inside, just as fine as I could do that. So this is the frame, I absolutely love it, the, the paint is lovely, I'm not going to talk about it any longer and that was it. That was it guys, so what I wanted to, to prove is uh, inside of the frame, no wrinkles, rear wheel, it looks symmetrical, it looks ideally symmetrical, um, and that's it. Uh, as for a hub in the rear wheel, I would say it has super sticky um, loop inside, a grease inside, so using something else would save a couple of watts. And the, oh, the saddle, the saddle, we've missed 300 grams. The saddle, sorry, it's already <laughs> on my killer uh, up there because I'm using mine. I, I already told you this one is 180 grams and that one was, is Pro Logo and is uh, 300 grams. Some of you told me it doesn't matter because uh, when you buy such, a, such an expensive bike, you are probably racing. Uh, rider, so you have to buy the saddle for yourself. That's right, but having better saddle, lighter saddle, 
for four thousand dollars would be would be much better the bike also came with this protection for the uh, chain stays and that's super cool so guys um, I am a Canada, Canada freak but I really really would like to show you just anything you're asking about Colnago Pinarello entry-level road bikes why don't we just buy those and put them to test in order to do that I'm not gonna be doing some deals maybe with the with the uh, with the manufacturers if they give us some bike if they have the bravery they will but if they don't we'll just buy the bike how can we do that uh, you can find in the description of some of my videos the links you can use these are my affiliate for Amazon eBay for some uh, cycling um, stores if you just buy them uh, there using those links I will just get some commissions from one to five percent of commission and I'm gonna use that for the channel for the lighting for the audio for better quality and certainly for buying first of all now for buying stuff to some uh, brutal testing if you like this idea just let me know I'm gonna put the, this info also on my uh, Facebook uh, page fan page uh, it's shy bike you can also find it in the description of this channel and that's it I I really enjoy doing it it's so much fun and it will be so much fun to write uh, Canada. The next episode will be about some gift ideas, uh, then we'll have the uh, front lights uh, testing and then I'm gonna show you how to put this back, back this bike back uh, together which can be which can be also interesting for all those doing their own project. Thank you so much for watching your support. See you tomorrow. Bye.